know, and really that wonderful. we even had a small part of that. Yeah, and, and all the forces that came together to make it possible. Yeah, is, exactly. You know, it's providence. It is amazing. So, like you said, it will do it, and the money will come. Yeah. If you build it. Right. They step will off come, the cliff, right? The ground, sort of, yeah, you know, so. the ground comes up to meet you, and <laughs> honestly, if you're doing things all for the right reasons, right. and and I, I think you can see like the passion that we have for, mm -hmm. for that for the program, and and we're we're in the midst right now of looking at some other nonprofits who have submitted their information to us to decide on one for this year. It's very difficult because we've got some great nonprofit organizations oh, sure. that so help many women worthy, and children. Worthy groups, worthy causes out there to try and exactly. Well, the, now the PSA uh, for the SIDS campaign. Then, you um, you had to get a, a script for it, obviously. Yes. And how did that process work? Well, we um, we talked to Carnegie screenwriters, some of the members of Carnegie screenwriters, and some other folks who we knew could write, and we said the, these are the parameters that we're looking for, and what the program is all about. Send us your your script for a thirty second spot. And we went through them, and even the director at the time had written a couple of, of, of his own ideas down. I even wrote one <laughs> because <laughs> I, I, yeah, it was so it was so passionate about yeah. it. But um, and we we spread them out in front of um, Judy and Evelyn from SIDS, and said, which one do you think gets your message across the best? And they read every single one of them, and both of them just pulled out Wendy Groobs, I think is how she Wendy pronounce, Groob, yeah. pronounce her name, who was with the Carnegie Screenwriters right. Group. Wendy, Wendy and they is said, a member of our, our Screenwriters Group, yes. And they said, that's it. That is it, right there. And it said, it said everything. And I think we just, Anita looked at it and just had to clip out a few words just to tighten it up a little bit, but it was, it was everything that they wanted to say. And it was, it was dead on. It was just absolutely perfect. And, and the format of, of a script for something like that, I imagine, would be more along the lines of um, a commercial or an right. industrial right. type video, which is certainly a different format than what right. we're used to with feature-length right. films. So I trimmed or a few, a couple words only because knowing commercials, you know, 30 mm -hmm. seconds is really not exactly 30; it's a little bit shorter. Mm -hmm. uh, and just you know, making sure it wasn't wall-to-wall -wall copy. You want breathing room to get the visuals to have those give a lasting impression. So I ran over and met with Judy uh, after I initially hooked up with Faith and went over what the story was. Met Judy, had a fantastic time lear learning about her organization, and then just, you know, trimmed a couple words up and uh, mm -hmm. changed some of the visuals, made some, you know, reviewed some stuff with Judy and Faith just to make sure the message was still intact but maybe uh, represented in a little different way. Mm -hmm. And then we were pretty buttoned up going into the shoot, I feel. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. It's a great day. Why don't we take a look at okay. the PSA then, the SIDS PSA. We'll, we'll look at that, and then we'll come back, and we'll talk a little bit more about the whole process of, of going from that, that idea and that script and actually getting this thing made. So why don't we do that now? Great. Each year, loving parents and caregivers cause serious injury and even death to infants by allowing unsafe sleeping conditions. Never sleep with your baby on a sofa, in a chair, or in an adult bed. Don't allow the baby you love to be the next tragic statistic. The only safe place for your baby to sleep is on its back in a crib. For more information, visit cribsforkids.org. So, oh, that was the PSA for the SIDS program, which was done by Women in Film and Media, written by Carnegie Screenwriters on Wendy Groob, directed by Anita, executive producer, Faith Dickinson. Mm -hmm. So, great job. Thank you. And what's really frightening is, is I think I violated every single one of those things when, mm. you know, when my kids were little yeah. or when we were growing up. So, it's, uh, it is a great service because I'm sure there's still a lot of people out there that don't know. Yep. Don't know these things. Or don't want to, they think I. I yeah. know how to raise my kid. Yeah, yeah. It, it will never happen to me. Mm -hmm. um, okay, you were the producer on that, Anita. Now, we, we kind of touched on some of your other work, and apparently you have been all over the world doing uh, producing and, and uh, filmmaking and even working the camera at times, yeah. shooting things, right? Yeah, I mean, I do shoot um, small cameras. I'm, I don't, uh -huh. I'm, not, I'm not some of the cities greater known uh, camera people, but you know, for third world countries or developing countries, Panasonic 100 or 200A serves me well. Uh, 
But most recently I was in Vietnam for a local organization, uh, Surgical International, and they go around the world uh, doing uh, plastic surgery, uh, cleft lip or cleft palate repair, mm -hmm. skin grafting, uh, fixing deformities. Uh, if you think of Operation Smile, but scale it to a, a smaller uh, level, that's what they do. So one of the uh, production companies I freelance for in the city, we had gone to Tanzania with them 10 years ago and did a video for them. And uh, Mind Over Media, the production company I freelance for, they're currently revamping the website. So. They made a trip to Vietnam in October and wanted to know, could we go along? And I said, sure. So I went with another camera person and we did some shooting and I'll be editing that uh, next month. So for these organizations that, that you're going around with, mm -hmm. um, you're documenting what they do? Yeah, to create it... awareness mainly. Um, I've been to, uh, last summer I was uh, in an orphanage uh, in Bomet, uh, Kenya, which is west of Nairobi. Uh, you know, AIDS still devastates uh, thousands of families all through Africa. And there's a huge orphan crisis in Kenya along with other uh, countries in Africa. So went down there, worked in an orphanage, uh, helped build a school building, and then provided, uh, took funds down to provide uh, income down there to get supplies, school supplies for orphans. Uh, in Beaumet and then have come back and am working with a group to decide how to further, you know, either apprenticeship programs for, you know, trade school or how do you allow an orphanage to be uh, sustainable, uh, whether growing crops or getting land to raise cattle or whatever, what kind of options do we have? And then have gone on medical missions to Guatemala, um, once again, you know, another poor country where simple things like diarrhea or dysentery. Um, I mean, you'd be amazed at, at the maladies that people can die from uh, in a third world country. So I go there and shoot and participate and then come home and edit that mm -hmm. and then give that to the organization that they can use to promote their cause. Well, yeah, things I guess that we take for granted here or things that would be minor, like you said, you know, diarrhea, right. dysentery, you know, things like that. Uh, right. Can, can be so devastating in some of these cultures. Right, clean water. I was just yeah. gonna say, clean right. water. Just, just mm -hmm. clean water. Or thinking we can just get from point A to point B, jump in the car, take a transport. Well, if you have rutted roads or that they're washed out by floods like in Haiti, which I've also been to and done work for, you know, that's a whole different story when you have to go by foot and you don't have transportation, so. And looking back at what you talked about, your, your college, time, you know, sociology degree, exactly. uh, Spanish, <laughs> and here you went into a completely different direction with, with the producing, the filmmaking, but I imagine those really come in handy because you're dealing with these other cultures, mm -hmm. other societies. Uh, it's, it's kind of amazing how these things sort of tie together. You know? It is, and I think a lot of people uh, that are in film or television production, they think they have to be completely focused on that but you don't realize that your world experience that you've had all these years or your other areas of interest funnel into that. So yes, you maybe like to shoot something or record something, but what are your interests? You know, is it architecture, is it art, is it theater? Um, is it social justice issues? Use that and funnel that into being creative with you know, TV and film and video. Which is why I think people who have, have studied sort of outside of that field or, mm -hmm. or worked and lived really for many people who uh, worked other jobs, maybe in the corporate world or the blue collar world. Mm -hmm and then go into uh, arts and entertainment. I think it kind of helps to be more well-rounded. Yeah. Now, most recently then, you were in Vietnam. Vietnam. Yes, yes.